Guys, this has been amazing. Welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. This is the Azalea Adventure to Hooper Bald Part 2. If you hadn't checked out Part 1, make sure to go check that out. But MrMaple.com, we're a mail order business out of Western North Carolina. We ship over a thousand varieties of Japanese maples and over a hundred different varieties of native, well, of, of azaleas, a hundred different varieties of azaleas directly to your door. Check out MrMaple.com. And this has been an epic adventure. Oh man, this has been great. You know, that we, we were thinking when we came out here, was this going to be the right time to come? And it has been. Everything has been in beautiful blooms. And I think it couldn't have been any of a better experience. So I know you guys are in for a treat. And uh, we appreciate you guys watching the Mr. Maple Show. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this with your gardening friends. If you know people who would really enjoy this, make sure to share this with them. And also, this is part of the Azalea Festival with the uh, Robbinsville and Graham County Travel and Tourism. So you want to uh, get and be a part of this, you can come out. They, this continues on from June until about the 1st of August, late July. Uh, so there's a whole Azalea Festival. You can go to the Graham County Tourism website and find out about that. But the Gregory Bald and Hooper Balds are some of the best places to see azaleas. I'm hoping to do the Gregory Bald hike soon, uh, very soon. So you have to stay tuned to watch out for continued azalea adventures, to watching out these native azaleas. But I hope you enjoyed today's uh, excursion. Uh, this is a pretty awesome trip. Man, this has been great. I hope, hope you guys are going to enjoy this. If you want to see me and Tim and Wesley geeking out in the, in the mountains here in North Carolina, checking out all the azaleas, stay tuned. So we're just running around the bald here like kids in a candy store, and we saw this one. What kind of color do you think this is, Wesley? God, it's almost like an apricot, almost. Yeah, it's just got some crazy color, but the thing that really stood out to us was this denser, compact habit. I mean, you know, a lot of these native azaleas that we're seeing have a little more open habit, and this thing's just so dense. I mean, that, that's pretty cool. So Wesley just spotted this gorgeous yellow calendulacium hidden up here. We just came out to the bald, we're going to run around and sort of get an idea of everything that's out here first and then come back and shoot some different footage of all the big azaleas that are out here. This calendulacium with this yellow color with a little bit of peach around the edge, I mean it's just spectacular on this little small rhododendron calendulacium. So we were over here taking some group pictures in front of this absolutely beautiful native azalea here behind us. And Wesley, what did you find? <laughs> uh, you know, just from being in the greenhouses, keeping an eye out for variegated sports and whatnot on maples, just so happened to look down and bam, some kind of variegated sport growing right underneath the calendulacium. We're not sure exactly what kind of plant it is, but we're going to investigate this. <laughs> wow, look at that. And you have two different shaped leaves as well. If anybody knows what type of plant this is, please post in the comment section. What a cool native. Yeah. Trekking through blackberries. No, the trusses on this plant just makes it killer. Let me uh, condense this real quick and I'll dive in. I don't know if we can dive in, it's a problem. I mean, there's blackberries everywhere. Hey, hey, we can come around the other side, we can come around the other side. Guys, Wesley's flying over with the drone. We're following him around. As we were walking through, we saw this amazing rhododendron calendulacea. And you keep hearing me say that, that's the native orange flame azalea. The thing that's really unique about this one is we've got such unique bloom color. We've got, it started out, appears as that orange red and it's fading around the edges. So around the edge of the petals, it's fading to like a peach color. The center is still that darker orange red and then you've got that bright yellow blotch. So you get this trifecta of colors in there that's really giving this one a really killer, killer bloom pattern. I mean, this thing's pretty awesome. 
So guys, we came to the back side of this bush so you can see some of those bloom trusses that are just starting to open. It's, it's amazing. You understand why people love these native plants that God has created and put out here for us here in Western North Carolina. Rhododendron calendulaceum, native orange flame azalea, amazing. Guys, so we're on the less beaten trail, headed back down. We saw this guy, just amazing red color. There are lots of diff different shades of these rhododendron calendulaceum here at Hooper Bald. And that's one of the things that's really unique about this area. We're just sort of going off some trail side trails up here. Saw this one that really has some good red color. Had to catch it on ca camera. I mean, this is just an exciting place if you love the native habitat. You gotta check this place out. I'm coming in. So guys, this, I don't see a tag on this to be able to confirm that this one is a Hooper's Red, but this is everything that you're looking for when you see a red calendulacium. The bloom is bigger. You've got red down to, instead of a yellow throat, more of an orange red throat. So the overall bloom is a bright red. And the blooms really are two and a half inches wide. The bloom trusses on this thing, they're amazing. I mean, this is everything you're looking for in a red calendulacium. I mean, I think this is the very best red form of rhododendron calendulacium that we've seen out here today. This thing's amazing, it's epic, wow. So you got to check out the guys at MrMaple.com. Mail order business ships directly to you. They do a lot of varieties of native azaleas, Japanese maples, over a thousand varieties of Japanese maples, over a hundred varieties of native azaleas. And we're here at the Hooper Bald and there's just native azaleas everywhere. I mean, we wanted to take you out here and kind of show you where it all gets started before it comes to the nursery. Before you can order from Mr. Maple, this is where it all originates from. So we're just really excited to share this with you. So shop at MrMaple.com to get some cool plants. I mean, we've got a plant here that's just showing that perfect shade of orange. I mean, this is probably one of the most pure oranges that I've seen out here so far today. I mean, the bees are just all over this plant. It's clearly an earlier bloomer because a lot of its trusses have opened up. Some have already started to drop. I mean, just some amazing, amazing blooms. Guys, we're just a few feet away from the orange one we just filmed, a few feet away from the red one we just filmed. And this has, has that copper effect. I don't know if this is Hooper copper for sure, but this has that same effect where you see, it starts out as the red and fades to the copper, or starts out as the copper and then fades to the red. I mean, just amazing on this plant where you're getting this two-tone bicolor effect on the native uh, rhododendron, <laughs> rhododendron calendulaceum, the native orange flame azalea. Amazing, super cool. This is what we were hunting for out here, was trying to find these bicolor native azaleas. And you can just see that striking presence it gives here in the mountains. I mean, we don't know for sure that this is Hooper's copper or not. We're not 100% sure, but this has the characteristics that Hooper's copper was selected for out here at the Hooper Bald. I mean, we've been searching for this plant when we were out here to see if we could find it. And here we found one. I thought we were coming in too early, I thought we're starting the beginning of the bloom season. You're not gonna see that bicolor effect because they're all gonna be one color. 
we've clearly got it where we're getting both that, that light orange, that darker orange, that color combination, pretty exciting, pretty awesome to go actually go out here and of all the azaleas out here, spot one that's doing exactly what we were looking for. I mean, that's what this place is known for is this amazing uh, diversity that you see in the rhododendron calendulaceum. And here we've got one of the bicolors. Uh, not 100% sure if this is exact azalea of Hooper's ball called Hooper's Copper, but this is exactly what we're looking for, the bicolor here at Hooper's Ball. So guys, we're super excited. We're running through all these small trails next to the ball. That's where a ton of the azaleas are. Uh, again, we've ran into a second rhododendron calendulaceum that has those characteristics that Hooper's copper was selected for. The orange, then this peachy color on both on the same plant, that bicolor effect that's really unusual for this bald. It's really cool because they leaf out one color, the blooms come out, bl blossom out one color, and then they change to the other color. Super exciting. This is what it's all about, going out in there in the wild and checking out these amazing plants. It's so awesome to see these out here in the wild, up here in the mountains. Me and Tim, we're hanging out. He's taking pictures. I got the video camera rolling. We hope you guys have been enjoying this episode of the Mr. Maple Show. We got a lot more to come here. We'll just keep on adventuring through and getting out here and doing some native azalea hunting. Guys, I, this has to be the original bicolor. Uh, reason being is I got in here, I was filming a bee flying around getting uh, some pollen and I see this tag in here, FS1503. So we know that this tree's been tagged. Well, this is very likely that bicolor, that Hooper's Copper. We've, we've found the Hooper's Copper, I'm pretty sure. I just have to find somebody who can help me identify that uh, code with Hooper's Copper. This tree has been tagged probably by someone from the Azalea Society here on the Hooper Bald. This is one of the awesome reasons we came out here was to see this plant in person. We've done it. It just happened to be that I had to chase down a bee that was taking pollen from one of uh, the flowers in here and filming that bee. So coming down the trail, Francis just spotted this another amazing yellow. This is just a little piece down from Hooper's Copper and uh, really showing some really good of that yellow color. We even got some yellow orange trusses showing here. I mean, this is a really cool one that's just now starting to bloom and uh, definitely something that's showing something a little bit extra right now. Another yellow one here at the Hooper's Ball. So we thought we'd bring you this one here. Uh, this is another unique one. And the fact that you've got orange in the center and more of an outside edge of that rosy orange. Uh, really cool, got some orange red trusses. This one's pretty awesome for some of these we've been seeing out here. Down this trail, back trail, this is where we're seeing a lot of the variability. Instead of off the beaten path, it's, I mean, it's the back trail down from the bald rather than the main trail. And uh, some really cool ones we're seeing down here on the Hooper's Bald. So all along the bald, 
Uh, we're coming up to the bald. There are azaleas everywhere. There's also lots of these mountain wolves, also known as calmia. Really starting to get some good blooms in here with these pinks right now. Some really nice oranges everywhere right now, and oranges and yellows and reds with the native flame azalea. So we're getting all types of colors through here. And of course, Weston keeps spotting variegated plants. So we're seeing a little bit of everything here. And uh, this is definitely a fun hike. You should definitely try it out and come check this out during the Azalea Festival here in Robbinsville. Hey guys, again, we're finding more tags out here. This one says FS01 slash six slash orange deep throat. I think that's what it says. I think so. I think you're right. And really cool. We'll figure out whose tag this is, figure out what this bloom looks like. But this tree's not in bloom right now. Looks like it's, the, it's either doesn't have any buds on it or too early or too late for this one. Um, or just doesn't have any blooms on it this year. But pretty amazing to keep spotting these. Of course, Wesley, who spotted the very good plants earlier, spotted the tree tagged without any uh, blooms on it. <laughs> so <laughs> this Hooper bald area as being such a cool plant to, place to come see these plants, see this diversity. And when you're seeing these tags, we know we're on the right trail. We know we're following where the experts have followed down this trail and spotted these plants and tagged them. So it's really cool to be behind these pioneers in a native azaleas and sort of just walking their exact same path, coming right down the path and seeing this cool plant. Guys, we just walked through a rhododendron thicket and then we've stumbled upon this beauty. I mean, this is a peach colored rhododendron calendulaceum. I mean, really peach. I haven't seen anything else quite like this yet. This is the perfect color of peach that really just stands out. I mean, we're gonna have to do up close to this thing. This thing is killer awesome, uh, super amazing. You probably keep hearing me say that, but I really am geeking out that hard. I hope you are too. This one has huge blooms. The blooms curve together to almost form a much bigger, larger truss. But the thing that's really unique about this is this orange red calendaceum has a really large orange blotch, probably the largest blotch I've seen out here. And it just makes something really special with that, the way this cups backward. The Hooper's bald azaleas, they're amazing. Hey guys, thanks for checking out part two of the Hooper bald azalea adventure. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. We've seen all kinds of calendulaceum. Uh, it's been awesome. So if you've enjoyed the part two, you got to make sure you go back and watch the part one. So thanks for watching, you guys.